Hey guys, uh, Scooter Street here. Just wanted to talk through and show you today uh, some of the um, the issues that we've encountered over the years, many, many times, with the uh, TGB Marini engine, um, which is the same, uh, same engine that you'd find in a lot of the Suzuki 50cc two-stroke models. Um, not particularly popular in Australia, but quite popular overseas. Uh, and this engine, this Marini engine uh, in the TGB, is also the same base engine that you find in an Aprilia Ditec as well. So um, these engines have a lot of crank issues. Uh, there's three main issues that they have that we've encountered, which are um, uh, shared pretty much among all the Marini engines. So the first and most common issue is the failure of the transmission side crank bearing, or the, the left-hand side main crank bearing. So that's the bearing that sits in here. Um, so the bearing just pops in there, obviously. We've pulled this one out. But um, the main issue here, the on the TGB engine, which I've got a crank just here, you notice that um, compared to a lot of other scooters, the variator side uh, crank uh, rod is really, really quite long. Uh, it's our belief um, that this puts additional strain on the bearing. Uh, it's obviously a very small amount of, um, of movement here, equates to a lot of movement there. So it's just putting additional strain on the bearing over time, which um, often leads to crank bearing failure. This is really, um, really common, definitely the most common issue uh, relating to crank bearings on Marini engines. But, um, and this is usually manifests as like a, a grumbling sort of deep vibration um, in the, um, down in the, in the bowels of the engine, which um, if you've heard it a few times, uh, you can pick it up, you know, within two seconds of hearing the engine, you hear that deep sort of grungling sound, uh, which eventually leads to, um, to either crank failure or piston seizure or, or both. The second and really common issue that we see on the, um, the, the Marini engines is uh, particularly on the TGBs is complete crank failure. Now, um, notice on this crank here, it's relatively tight across here, and it's pretty loose across this one. So what we've seen many, many times as well over the years is the failure of this pressed pin inside the two lobes of the crank, which eventually leads to um, uh, the, the crank literally falling apart, which, uh, you know, you, you, uh, amazingly, these bikes will often still run with the crank literally just sitting together inside the crank casing. Obviously, the crank casing being all together holds it in place, but um, as soon as we split the casing, uh, the, um, the crank literally falls into two pieces. The right-hand side pulls away with the right-hand side of the casing, the left-hand side pulls away with the left-hand side. So um, it's amazing they still run like this, um, but um, yeah, similar sort of issue. We had a bike in the shop recently that was doing it and um, had a, quite a, a deep, grungling, cranky sound, particularly bad, um, and quite a bit of vibration when you were riding. And um, yeah, as soon as you pull it apart, the crank immediately fell straight apart. So um, that one obviously um, was finished. And um, even when we pulled it out, there was quite, you could literally see daylight between the pin and the lobe of the crank. So um, really, really had been badly worn. And a lot of these sort of crank problems, uh, they're exponential. So as soon as it starts to uh, wear a little bit, the more worn it is, the more quickly it wears further. So um, it's one of those problems that can, uh, be only very slightly noticeable for a short time and then it suddenly gets a lot worse. The third problem, which is uh, less common but uh, than the other two problems, but still more common on this engine than any other engine we've ever, ever experienced, is the crank bearing spinning inside the casing or spinning on the shaft, which often sometimes one causes the other. But um, if you notice on the inside of this, this around, on the inside of this, there's, uh, circular marks going along around the um, the inside of the case in there because the bearing let's get it in focus the bearing has been spinning inside the casing now this can be caused by a few things um, a lot of the time it's caused by maybe a, a bearing that's starting to fail uh, perhaps poor casting um, it, it's hard to say really but whenever you pull a, um, an engine apart and it's got these long lateral uh, marks, particularly you see it's got a couple little shiny spots there where it's um, actually uh, sort of the two, uh, the soft alloy and the, um, the shiny steel, which is, uh, makes up the outside of the, um, the actual crank bearing, has sort of polished up the, al the aluminium of the casing and uh, left those marks. As soon as you see that, that's very indicative of a bearing that's been spinning inside the casing. And it gives you some contrast, so obviously it's spun inside the left hand side casing, which is the variator side. Now on this side, get it in focus, it doesn't have those long lateral 
marks a couple of little shiny spots which just because it's um uh nice uh casting on the casing but this one actually has you can sort of see some sort of vertical lines up and down it from when the bearing has been pressed in rather than horizontal lines running the circumference of the inside of it because the bearing hasn't spun in this side but it has spun in the very outer side now on this crank as well come over to the actual crankshaft you can see similar sort of thing uh, on the inside here where the bearing the inside of the bearing has spun on the outside of the crank as well so uh, i would say that one of them has started first uh, or the bearing has started to fail at a guess uh, and that has caused um, uh, it to the bearing to either lock up or seize or have too much resistance within it and has spun the crank and then spun the casing as well. Now, when you get to a situ situation like this where it's spun on the inside of the casing, uh, depending on how bad it is, sometimes you can sort of rough up the inside of here, uh, the inside of the casing so that the, the bearing wants to seat more nicely and it's not too really nice smooth surfaces wanting to, wanting to move around, you rough it up a little bit so the bearing's kind of more inclined to stay. When it's spun the actual crankshaft, uh, your only option is to replace the crankshaft. There's, um, there's really nothing you can do with that one. So um, obviously in any of these instances, if you're opening up a TGB uh, crank casing, you're definitely going to replace the, um, the bearings. And uh, we would always recommend replacing the crankshaft because on almost, I would say, oh, almost every TGB with more than 20,000 Ks that we've worked on has either had a blown crank or has had the crank replaced because it's uh, just that prolific of an issue with this particular engine. Some of, the later model, some of the later model TGBs weren't as bad. Um, TGB went to some efforts to try and improve the design, but um, the majority of the TGBs that we have, at least in Australia, are, um, uh, are fairly old, uh, and because um, they're not bringing them into Australia anymore, and they're starting to have a lot of these issues. So um, if, you, if you have a TGB that's starting to make some unusual noises and feelings from the crank, uh, one of the best ways to test it is uh, while the, the crank uh, is in the bike, um, removing, removing the variator, the whole variator unit, and um, essentially just feeling for play up and down the crank. Because if the bearing's starting to fail, it will have excessive movement and you'll be able to move the crank up and down uh, while it's actually in the casing because there's excessive movement. It really shouldn't move, um, except certainly not an excessive amount. There is a fourth issue which is quite common, and that's the end of this crankshaft here uh, bending. This is pretty common as well. Um, and you can usually tell when uh, you pull, trans uh, pull the transmission cover off the bike, start the bike up, and you'll see the, um, the end of the crank uh, making an elliptical uh, motion rather than just essentially being fixed but spinning. Very, very common as well. So pretty much all of these issues are um, the end of your crank, and you basically need to replace the crank and the bearings. Uh, and like I mentioned, if you're, if you're rebuilding a TGB, I would usually recommend replacing the crank as well. So... Um, Hopefully uh, that gives you a little bit of confidence to diagnose your bike. We do have all the parts available on the website uh, in terms of replacement cranks, bearing and seal kits. And uh, whenever you're obviously replacing the bearings, you need to replace the seals as well.